Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this week's meeting of the Hamilton Rotary Club. I'd like to call uh, George, you and, okay, George Johnson forward to introduce our guest and program. Thank you, George. Good afternoon. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Liz Hayden. Liz has worked for the City of Hamilton's Economic Development Department for four years and focuses primarily on small business development and downtown revitalization. One of Liz's main projects right now is building up the Main Street Business District. She is on the committees for Alive After Five, Operation Pumpkin, the Main Street Area Association, and We Are Hamilton. Liz went to Xavier University and studied in the philosophy, politics, and the public program. She has a master's in city and regional planning and a master's in public policy and management from the Ohio State University. <laughs> Liz is originally from St. Louis, but she now lives in the Rossville Historic District with her husband Danny and dog Swanson. Liz Hayden. Thanks for um, having me today. Um, I'm actually a stand-in for my boss, Jody Gunderson. Um, George Johnson asked him to speak, and he said yes, and then promptly double-booked himself and volunteered me to do it. So um, I'm not exactly sure what Jody was planning on talking about, but I want to talk about what's going on on Main Street. Um, it is uh, what I spend a lot of my time on. It's also a really important part of um, the city's economic development strategy right now. Um, we've been really lucky in the past um, couple years to have some good job growth. And while we're always looking for more, we've shifted um, our priorities um, to really focus our time and energy on um, things to help support that job growth. So um, workforce development, you know, connecting Hamiltonians with the jobs that are available, um, that our companies are hiring for, and then also quality of life. And Main Street um, revitalization is a big part of that quality of life component because we um, don't just, the jobs are great, but it's not the only thing. We want people, those people that are getting those jobs to choose to live in Hamilton and to choose to spend time here shopping and eating and all that good stuff. So um, I don't want to talk too much about core because I know I'm sure you've all heard Mike Dingledine speak and I hear he's speaking again soon. Um, but uh, I did want to start by bringing it up because I, th I really think that the core fund is the leader for change on Main Street and um, the city is an investor and a partner on that. And um, the, the I really think, you know, core is taking a comprehensive approach to the first three blocks of um, Main Street and working. Um, they've acquired eight properties, I think, and the city owns two properties. And the goal is to, um, for CORE, is to, find, to get a loan from a bank to, re um, to renovate all of them at, um, simultaneously and just have that huge impact, one single impact. And I think that's important. Um, it, it needs to be that way, I think. Uh, for it to be successful, um, it can't just be one building or one restaurant. It needs to be a, um, a, a number of things happening at the same time. Um, and you know, just from my own personal perspective, doing small business development for the city, I think, I ha I think that we needed an organization like CORE to make the change that is needed on Main Street uh, because uh, I deal with, I, um, I think a lot of times people see vacant storefronts on Main Street and assume that there's not interest, and that's not the case a lot of times. Um, it's just, I, I have people that are interested in doing things on Main Street, but the cost of, I love the old buildings, but the cost of renovating them is really a challenge. And it's too much of a risk for a lot of these startup businesses, and it's a lot, it's too much money for the, the property owners. Um, and so CORE coming in and taking this comprehensive um, focused approach is the, I think is what was needed to overcome the market failure that we were experiencing on Main Street. A sub component of what CORE is working on is adding parking to the district. 
Um, this is a new lot near um, Main and D. Um, and uh, they're working on another one near the Old Town Cigar. And I, I guess the vision probably is to have some, one of these on every block eventually. Um, but this is adding 50 new parking spaces to the district. We don't really have a parking problem right now, but hopefully we will once we have new residents and uh, <laughs> business owners and new businesses over there. But it's also really good for us to have the um, parking lots ready to go now, even before that, because it's really been helpful for me selling the, um, the leasing the spaces, because um, they know that their customers will have a place to, um, to park. A project that the city is taking the lead on is um, a streetscape enhancement project for the district. So Jeff Speck, who's a national urbanist, came to town a few years ago and was a, kind of checking out everything that was going on in Hamilton. And he took one look at Main Street and was like, I barely ever suggest streetscape projects, but Main Street needs something. So, you know, and I agree, I think it can really, really, ben um, really benefit the district to um, just be a warmer place to walk on. Um, we had a vision um, where we were thinking we were going to widen the street, or uh, excuse me, the sidewalks. Um, and create more space for outside dining and things like that. But we've gotten some good, we've had some really, really productive, constructive conversations with the property owners and um, business owners about what they want. And they really like the on-street parking and they had some serious concerns about the alleys. And so we went back to the drawing board to try to figure out how we could take their feedback into consideration and, um, mac and maximize the impact of the um, uh, project. So we don't really know exactly when it's going to start or what it's going to look like, but I have a pretty good sense that the couple things I'm going to point out are part of the project. So the first is you see the um, the lighting here. I think that's what we're going to model. We're going to get new lighting for the district that's going to have some pedestrian level lighting and some street lighting, and just to kind of create a more uh, warmer place for uh, pedestrians to walk on. The other thing is the alleys. That wasn't really part of our plan initially. We, at, we heard from the business owners especially that the alleys are in bad shape, as you can see from here. And uh, we walked it and we agreed. And so that's something that we're taking into consideration. Because we are taking, um, you know, going to be adding the uh, alleys to the scope of the project and we didn't, the, the, we're preserving most of the on-street parking, we're not so sure that we're going to rip out all the sidewalks and start from scratch. And so then we started having challenges. Well, how are we going to add more seating? Um, and how are we going to add s some greenery to the district um, without having to rip up all the sidewalks? And so something that we're exploring is a concept called parklets. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. Um, but it's basically um, you take a couple of the parking spaces and you put a semi-permanent or temporary type structure there, um, and it can add. You can really it can be for anything. This one, you know, has bike seating or bike uh, parking and some greenery and some seating. Um, some of them are more art projects. I think that we really could do some fun, interesting things there and still preserve a lot of the parking. So something that is for sure happening on Main Street is the real the fixing of this intersection, which will be very welcomed for both cars and its pedestrians. And this is going to start um, construction spring 2017 and finish in spring 2018. So enjoy that construction. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Main Millville Eaton. Um, so Stepping away from the public um, and nonprofit type work that's going on on the uh, district, wanted to point out that we have gotten some some really new, some good business activity recently on Main Street. Um, this is a picture that Greg Lynch from uh, the Journal News took um, that kind of shows a little um, center of activity that's arisen um, on Main Street recently. Secretly, Shabby's been there for a while, but Serendipity and Treasures are on Main or is new. Ivy Salon is new. It's on the first block of Maine. And then First Ward Wood Company, I'm not sure. This one, they don't have a storefront, so I'm not sure if you are aware of them, but they're in the old Marshall Electric Building. And then recently, Unsung Salvage Design Company announced that they are going to have a Main Street real retail store in the Marshall Electric Building. Silver Wing Sewing and Alterations just had their grand opening last week. So did Sacred Space next to Secretly Shabby. Um, the studio, it's a paint your own pottery 
uh, studio on the first block of Main Street uh, is going to be, I think, opening next week. Flourish Home, this was one of um, CORE's first uh, bigger successes on Main Street. Uh, they purchased the Old Tom Cigar Building and should be op they're opening their fourth um, home decor location here. Um, they should be open in the next couple months. And then, you know, almost as importantly, or as importantly, I guess, as getting the um, retail uh, storefronts activated is getting new residents um, along Main. I, was, I lived in the mercantile lofts the first year that they were open. And uh, I really believe that that was an important catalyst for change downtown to have people there after 5 p.m. walking around and that, making that their home. And I think the same will be true for Main Street. Um, CORE, I think, controls 28 units, and the city uh, controls about 8 or 10 units. And 40 units doesn't really sound like a lot, but the mercantile lofts only had 29, and that made a big difference. And so I really think that this could be really impactful. But we also are, of course, looking for private development. The two pictures that I showed you are the uh, apartments in the old Marshall Electric building. Dale Warzelbacher is one of our pioneers over there doing some really cool stuff. Um, and he renovated two of the apartments in that building. They hadn't been occupied since the 1970s. So it's pretty cool to have some new people on Main Street. We just need a lot more of it. And so one of the things that we're trying to do to encourage um, Main Street uh, pr private development is to have, uh, we had this we have this new program that started in January called the Upper Floor Residential Rehab Program. And it's an incentive for private developers to renovate the residential spaces above the storefronts. And it's a 20, up to $20,000 per unit matching grant um, to get, um, to incentivize people to do some high quality apartments on Main Street. Um, and I think that we kind, this kind of came out of the um, belief that right now, without putting some serious sweat equity, like Dale you know, works on the weekends with his family to renovate things. It just doesn't make sense on paper. The buildings are too expensive to renovate and, and the, the rents are so affordable in Hamilton that it just doesn't make sense. And so we're trying to bridge that gap with this program. We haven't had anybody use it, but we have a handful of people that are interested in it, and I'm hopeful that we'll have at least somebody utilizing it by the end of the year. So I spend a lot of time, my time recruiting development to, to Main Street, which is more on a day-to-day -day basis working with um, trying to recruit businesses um, to Maine. And like I said, there is interest. But I've talked to you know Chris Cannon at True West, and he says that people come in to, um, to True West a lot asking about what's available. And, and then I spoke even just last week with Deborah Jones, who opened Silver Wings um, Sewing. And she said that it took her a month to figure out who to talk to. And she called about five or six people to find out what was available on Main Street. And it just kind of reiterates, it's kind of helped me solidify this view that we need to treat Main Street like a mall, um, which I know sounds kind of weird. But, um, you know, there are a lot of the, some of the business, small businesses that are doing cool things in Hamilton have mentioned to me that they get calls pretty regularly from places, places like Bridgewater Falls trying to recruit them to move. And we don't have anything like that on Main Street right now. And it's really not very easy to find information about what's available um, for these small retail spaces. And it shouldn't be that hard. I mean, I think it's kind of crazy that Deborah Jones waited a month to find out what was available. I mean, we're losing so many people. And so one of the things that I want to do kind of to launch more of a mall-like approach is to have a Main Street website that we're going to work on, but just kind of exactly like 3CDC's website for Over the Rhine, have a place that is the central location. If people are interested in opening a store on Main, they, it's pretty easy to contact someone to find out what's available. Same with if they want to live on Main Street or same if they want to be the next Dale Warzelbacher or something like that. So I think this will be relatively easy to do. It's just a matter, I think it should live under the Main Street Area Association. Um, and we just are trying to figure out how to pay for it and things like that. So <laughs> details. Um, so. Going back to the Main Street Area Association, I also really think that a big part of recruiting new businesses is 
working well with your current businesses and making sure that they're thriving and happy. Um, I know, I mean, they're the, if businesses are succeeding downtown or on Main Street, they're gonna be our biggest salespeople because they know the other people um, that are looking um, to maybe start businesses. So I work a lot with the downtown businesses and I've been working um, with the Main Street Area Association as well. Um, a, earlier this year, a couple people that have been working with the association for a long time, especially the Underwoods, who um, have been working with it since the 80s, have decided they want to step down, which I totally understand. So we were trying to figure out what the, what the future looked like for the organization. And we sent out an email to see if their people were interested in maintaining it. And we had an awesome response from a lot of new businesses that want to get together, want to work together, want to make the district a great place to have a business. They want, you know, they see it as a way to make their um, venture succeed. So we're, we've been meeting and we're talking about, of course, the, one of the first things is a, is a website, but also just about, you know, what events can we do to bring people? Because I think Main Street could be great for weekends, kind of, for Saturday type events, um, but we just need to organize ourselves and get it together and teach people, get, give people a reason to come to Main Street see what's there, know where to park, all that stuff, and just change their behavior so that Main Street becomes a destination for them. Thank you, Liz. And she said she will be here for a few minutes afterwards if you have questions or something for her. Uh, you know, after a meeting, you can catch her up here. Interesting, uh, interesting proposals. And I know that Mike is, Mike is up later this month. Uh, is in, uh, we'll piggyback on this, I'm sure, as well, and it's always an interesting presentation. Have a great evening and a weekend, and we'll see you all next week. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>